Hi everyone, I'm Miss Brianna from the Hopewell Branch Library, and welcome to another episode of Biography Shorts for Kids. This month we are celebrating black history by looking at famous African Americans in history. Today I will be talking about figures from the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance was a major artistic and cultural movement in history for America, and specifically African Americans. It began in the Harlem neighborhood of New York City in the 1920s and 30s. New York is located in the northeastern part of the United States. Harlem is located in the northern part of Manhattan. In the early 1900s, Harlem's population was growing. Many black poets, playwrights, novelists, essayists, artists, and musicians lived in the neighborhood. African American art, literature, and music flourished in Harlem. The Harlem Renaissance was a time of growing racial pride. The Harlem Renaissance redefined African American culture and expression. African Americans celebrated what it meant to be black in America. Soon, many people throughout the country embraced black arts and culture. Today I will be sharing with you some books that will give you an introduction to the Harlem Renaissance as well as biographies of some of the important figures from the period. First, we'll take a look at some books that give an introduction to the Harlem Renaissance. First, we have Sugar Hill, Harlem's Historic Neighborhood, written by Carol Boston Weatherford, illustrated by R. Gregory Christie. Take a walk through Harlem's Sugar Hill and meet all the amazing people who made this neighborhood legendary. With upbeat rhyming text, Sugar Hill celebrates the Harlem neighborhood that successful African Americans first called home during the 1920s. Children raised in Sugar Hill not only looked up to these achievers, but also experienced art and culture at home, at church, and in the community. Books, music lessons, and art classes expanded their horizons beyond the narrow limits of segregation includes brief biographies of jazz greats Duke Ellington, Count Basie, Sonny Rollins, and Miles Davis, artists Aaron Douglas and Faith Ringgold, entertainers Lena Horne and the Nicholas Brothers, writer Zora Neale Hurston, civil rights leader W.E.B. Du Bois, and lawyer Thurgood Marshall. This is a perfect read-aloud introduction to the Harlem Renaissance. This book celebrates the people and the neighborhood where black culture blossomed in the 20s and 30s. Harlem Renaissance Party, written and illustrated by Faith Ringgold. Calcott Honor artist Faith Ringgold takes readers on an unforgettable journey through the Harlem Renaissance. Lonnie and his uncle go back to Harlem in the 1920s. Along the way, they meet famous writers, musicians, artists, and athletes, from Langston Hughes and W.E.B. Du Bois to Josephine Baker and Zora Neale Hurston, and many more, who created this incredible period. And after an exciting day of walking with giants, Lonnie fully understands why the Harlem Renaissance is so important. Faith Ringgold's bold and vibrant illustrations capture the song and dance of the Harlem Renaissance, while her story will captivate young readers, teaching them all about this significant time in our history. A glossary and further reading list are included in the back of the book. The Harlem Renaissance, written by Duchess Harris with Martha London. In the 1920s, many African Americans left the South to escape racial violence. Some settled in New York City's Harlem neighborhood. Black artists, writers, and musicians in Harlem ushered in a cultural revolution called the Harlem Renaissance. The Harlem Renaissance explores this movement and its legacy. Easy to read text, vivid images, and helpful back matter give readers a clear look at this subject. At 48 pages, this book gives a very good overview of the Harlem Renaissance and uses easy to read text. Much of the information from my introduction was taken from this book. Harlem's Little Blackbird, the story of Florence Mills, written by Renee Watson and illustrated by Christian Robinson. Zora and Langston, Billy and Bessie, Yubi and Duke. If the Harlem Renaissance had a court, they were its kings and queens. But there were other, lesser known individuals whose contributions were just as impactful, such as Florence Mills. Born to parents who were former slaves, Florence knew early on that she loved to sing and that people really responded to her sweet bird-like voice. Her dancing and singing catapulted her all the way to the stages of 1920s Broadway, where she inspired songs and even entire plays. Yet with all this success, she knew firsthand how bigotry shaped her world. And when she was the, offered the role of a lifetime from Ziegfeld himself, she chose to support all black musicals instead. Josephine, The Dazzling Life of Josephine Baker Written by Patricia Ruby Powell and illustrated by Christian Robinson Josephine Baker was a famous singer, dancer, and entertainer. She worked her way from the slums of St. Louis to the grandest stages in the world. 
Josephine Baker sang, danced, crossed her eyes, knocked her knees, and made crazy, funny faces, eventually stealing the show. She discovered it was hard for a black performer to see her name in lights in America in the 1920s, so she moved to France, where she later joined the French underground and was a spy during World War II. She won a medal for her service. After her return to America, she joined Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speaking at the March on Washington, the only woman to do so. This wonderful book gives a fantastic portrait of the passionate performer and civil rights advocate. Meticulously researched by both author and artist, Josephine's powerful story of struggle and triumph is an inspiration and a spectacle, just like the legend herself. Duke Ellington, The Piano Prince and His Orchestra Written by Andrea Davis Pinckney, illustrated by Brian Pinckney A brief recounting of the career of this jazz musician and composer, who along with his orchestra created music that was beyond category. Duke Ellington was a pivotal fixture of the Harlem Renaissance. He was the band leader of the historic Cotton Club and a master composer. In this biography, readers will find out what Duke Ellington did for the jazz world, how his music was played, and the legacy he left behind. The author highlights the musician's childhood, early ragtime days, and rise to popularity, playing at the Cotton Club and later Carnegie Hall. A page of biographical information and impressive source notes are included in the back. This was a great introduction to Duke Ellington, and I highly enjoyed it. Ella Fitzgerald, The Tale of a Vocal Virtuosa Written by Andre Davis Pinckney, illustrated by Brian Pinckney. Ella Fitzgerald began her life as a singer on the stage of the Apollo Theater in Harlem, when she was just 17 years old. Her rich voice and vocal innovations brought her fame and a remarkable career that spanned half a century and won her generations of fans around the world. Ella Fitzgerald is probably best known for her scat singing. According to the author, this is a style that abandons the lyrics of a song to use nonsense syllables to carry the rhythm. Though trumpeter Louis Armstrong is said to have originated scat singing, it was Ella Fitzgerald who made it popular. Acclaimed author Andrea Davis Pinckney has told Ella's inspiring story in the voice of Scat Cat Monroe, a feline fan whose imagined narrative sings with the infectious rhythms of scat. Two-time Caldecott Honor winner Brian Pinckney's dramatic perspectives and fantastical images offer a jazzy improvisation all their own. In Her Hands, the story of sculptor Augusta Savage written by Alan Schroeder and illustrated by Jamie Burreal. As a young girl in 1890s Florida, Augusta Savage enjoyed nothing more than playing with clay. As she grew into a young woman, she wanted to pursue her career as an artist, but to do so, she would have to leave behind everything she knew. Augusta headed to New York City to follow her dream wherever it might take her. Award-winning author Alan Schroeder deftly weaves together known historical details to create a compelling fictionalized account of sculptor Augusta Savage, who overcame many obstacles as a young woman to become a premier female sculptor of the Harlem Renaissance. Warm paintings capture Augusta Savage's struggles and resilience as she skillfully carves out her own special place in art history. Includes an informative afterword about Savage's adult life and works, plus photographs. Take a Picture of Me, James Van Der Zee, written by Andre J. Loney, illustrated by Keith Mallett. James Van Der Zee was just a young boy when he saved enough money to buy his first camera. He took photos of his family, classmates, and anyone who would sit still for a portrait. By the fifth grade, James was a school photographer and unofficial town photographer. Eventually, he outgrew his small town and moved to the exciting, fast-paced world of New York City. After being told by his boss that no one would want his or her photo taken by a black man, James opened his own portrait studio in Harlem. He took photographs of legendary figures of the Harlem Renaissance. Politicians such as Marcus Garvey, performers including Florence Mills, Bill Bojangles Robinson, and Mamie Smith, and ordinary folks in the neighborhood too. Everyone wanted fancy portraits by James Van Der Zee. Winner of Lee and Lowe's New Voices Award, Take a Picture of Me, James Van Der Zee, tells the story of a groundbreaking artist who chronicled an important era in Harlem and showed the beauty and pride of its people. This picture book biography not only introduces readers to Van Der Zee's life, but also provides a glimpse into the Harlem Renaissance and highlights some techniques used in early photography, it includes an afterward photos and author's sources. 
Jump at the Sun, the true life tale of unstoppable story catcher Zora Neale Hurston. Written by Alicia Williams, illustrated by Jacqueline Alcantara. Zora Neale Hurston was an African-American anthropologist and author who became famous for her short stories and essays about African-American culture, as well as her research work in African-American folklore. She was a prominent writer during the Harlem Renaissance. This book gives young readers an introduction to the life of Zora Neale Hurston, starting with her early childhood days in Eatonville, Florida. As a child, Zora was a girl who hankered for tales like bees for honey. Now her mom always told her that if she wanted something, to jump at the sun. Because even though you might not land quite that high, at least you'd get off the ground. So Zora jumped from place to place, from the porch of the general store where she listened to folk tales, to Howard University, to Harlem. And everywhere she jumped, she shined sunlight on the tales most people hadn't been bothered to listen to until Zora. The tales no one had written down until Zora. Tales in a whole culture of literature overlooked until Zora. Until Zora jumped. Poetry for Young People, Langston Hughes. Edited by David Russell and Arnold Rampersad. Illustrated by Benny Andrews. Langston Hughes was one of the most well-known writers of the Harlem Renaissance. He is particularly known for his descriptions of black life in America from the 20s through the 60s. He wrote novels, short stories, plays, and poetry. This anthology from the series Poetry for Young People includes a brief profile of African-American poet Langston Hughes and some of his better-known poems for children. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about some of the figures from the Harlem Renaissance. If you wish to borrow any of the books I shared with you today, please visit our website at mcl.org. Here you can place a hold on the titles you're interested in and pick them up at the library when they are available. Thank you for watching today. I hope you'll join us for more biography shorts for kids. New videos will premiere each Tuesday on the library's YouTube channel.